God always now <laughs>
the name of Jacob's God will protect you. Oh, good comforter, save us who sing to you. Alleluia. <coughs> May he send you help from his holy place and give you support from Zion. Oh, good Oh. 
to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. When the Most High descended and confused tongues, He scattered nations. When He distributed the tongues of fire, He called all to unity. We also with one voice, glorify the most holy spirit. glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and forever. of a mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared to them tongues as of fire, distributed and resting on each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now they were there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven, and at this sound the multitude came together. And they were bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. And they were amazed and wondered, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and other parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongue the mighty works of God. Peace to you, reader. Wisdom be attentive. Hallelujah. <laughs> heavens were established by the breath of the Spirit, all their power. From heaven the Lord looked down, he watched over 
all the children of men. Scripture says, from within him there shall flow rivers of living water. He said this, however, of the Spirit, whom they, whom they who believed in him were to receive, for the Spirit had not yet been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. Some of the crowd, therefore, when they heard these words, said, This is truly the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. Some, however, said, Can the Christ from, come from Galilee? Does not the scripture say it is of the offspring of David and from Bethlehem, the village where David lived, that the Christ is to come? So there arose a division among the crowd because of him. And some of them wanted to seize him, but no one laid hands on him. The attendants therefore came to the chief priests and Pharisees, and these said to them, Why have you not brought him? The attendants answered, Never has man spoken as this man. The Pharisees then answered them, Have you also been fooled? Has any of the rulers believed in him or any of the Pharisees? But this crowd, which does not know the law, is accursed. Nicodemus, the man who had come to Jesus at night, who was one of them, said to them, does our law judge a man unless it first gives him a hearing and knows what he does? They answered and said to him, Are you also a Galilean? Search and see that out of Galilee arises no prophet. And again Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me does not walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. Be king, comforter, spirit of truth, everywhere present and filling all things, treasury of blessings, about this this feast because this feast is one of the greatest of the church it's about one of God's greatest gifts the gift of the Holy Spirit one of God's greatest interventions in human history so this is a, a great day as we celebrate the giving of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost uh, most of what the church wants to teach us as you heard is in, is in the prayers prayers to the Holy Spirit prayers to the Trinity um, the unique thing, if you will, about Christian faith, that God is one, but three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As the uh, Traparian said, Blessed are you, O Christ our God. You fill the fishermen with wisdom, sending down, on, sending down upon them the Holy Spirit. 
Through them you have caught the whole world in your net. O lover of mankind, glory to you. Pentecost, destined, all humanity is destined to come to the Lord through this outpouring. And the, next, the Kentuckian talks about the fact that, remember the Tower of Babel? People tried to reach God and were scattered, and now this is the reverse of Babel. People understand, and all are called to unity. The Kentuckian for today. When the Most High descended and, con and confused tongues, he scattered the people. But when he distributed the tongues of fire, he called all to unity. Therefore, with one voice, let us praise the Most Holy Spirit. Um, so briefly, I'd just like to make three points for your consideration and reflection. So during this season, after Pascha, both in the East and the West, we read from the Acts of the Apostles, which is a great, powerful book of the Bible. I mean, they're great stories, and they're great stories because they're true. We see the power of God at work in the apostles and the disciples of Jesus. Um, some have called, you know, St. Luke, who wrote the gospel, also wrote the book of Acts, and some have called Acts the gospel of the Holy Spirit. So as we've been reading Acts, we've seen all kinds of great things, and today the reading <coughs> from the second chapter of Acts. I'd like to look, get it in its context. In the first chapter of Acts, let's look at three verses that relate to this as well. As Jesus says to the apostles, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift of my Father. Wait for the gift my Father promised. John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. <coughs> you will all receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. The Lord's saying some powerful things there. Remember, they were cowering in fear. These men who were afraid for their lives, Pentecost happens and they're out on the streets preaching. <coughs> Something changed. Something changed in them because of the gift of the Holy Spirit. There was a power they didn't have before. There was a courage, a fearlessness that they didn't have before. So before this, Jesus tells them, don't leave, wait for the gift of my Father. The gift of my Father. The Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and is given as a gift to us. Wait for the Holy Spirit before you either despair or try and figure things out or do them on your own. Wait for the Holy Spirit who's promised. You'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When, we, when we're baptized, we are changed. It's not simply uh, water. It's water and the Holy Spirit. <coughs> God changes us. And you will receive power. What does that mean? And will be his witnesses, witnesses to Christ throughout the world. Well, the point I'd like to make about power is we all need a resource beyond ourselves. We all need strength greater than our own. We all need a power beyond ourselves. Whether it's in a variety of situations in, in life we find ourselves in. We might find ourselves saying, Lord, I just... I am not good enough, strong enough, healthy enough, wealthy enough, whatever it is. There are things that are beyond our control. We need a resource. We need a strength. We need a power that's more than we can do for ourselves. And that is the gift of the Holy Spirit. May we be open to that gift of the Holy Spirit, the power beyond ourselves. The second point I'd like to make, make is one of the beautiful, powerful things about Eastern Christianity is our emphasis on the Holy Spirit. Do you, you realize how often we pray to the Holy Spirit? Heavenly King, the prayers we pray today. Um, when we pray the Lord have mercies, we're praying them usually in a Trinitarian way. So many of our prayers are Trinitarian. When we pray the Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy and Immortal, we're praying to the Holy Trinity. Um, holy One, come to us and heal our infirmities for your name's sake. That Holy One is the Holy Trinity. In the, in the common beginning prayers. We pray to the Holy Spirit. When I was younger, as a young man, when someone first said, who are you praying to? It's like I'm praying to God. You know, I'm, I'm kind of like putting it out there, hoping somebody up there is listening. But we should be conscious of who we're praying to. Are we praying to the Father? We should. Are we praying to Jesus? We should. Are we praying to the Holy Spirit? We should. 
So I, I love our church that it points out that fact to us. Um, and, and how often we give glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit by praying the doxology. Um, as you know, that, that wasn't the original. The whole church East and West has the glory because of St. Basil who was emphasizing the equality of all the persons of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. My third point, I'd like to look at a verse from John uh, chapter 16, um, uh, verse 8. Jesus is teaching about the Holy Spirit. And he says, when the Holy Spirit, or you notice some translations say counselor or comforter, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will convict the world about sin, righteousness or justice, that word is sometimes translated either way, and judgment or condemnation. So this is what Jesus said. When the Holy Spirit comes, he will convict the world about sin, righteousness, and judgment or condemnation. Sometimes there are two things that get confused because they both start with the same three letters. <clears throat> Sometimes we feel convicted of our sins. Sometimes we feel condemned for our sins. And there is a big difference, a world of difference. The Holy Spirit will convict us of our sins. The Holy Spirit does not condemn us. The Holy Spirit convicts us. I remember one time, again, as a young man having grown up in this area, it was a kind of a beautiful spring day, and you know, the area I was heading up Union Avenue toward Blossom Hill, and the mountains were in front of me. I was driving line, it was a great, like, oh man, this was such a good day, until now I realized I messed up. But the Lord showed me. The only reason he was convicting me of that sin was not to ruin my day, but that I might recognize that and acknowledge it and repent and get to confession. After that, I realized, wow, being convicted of our sin is a gift because repentance is a gift. We don't have to carry around the sin, the guilt, the garbage, the baggage. We can let it all go. So my point about the Holy Spirit convicting us, when you do an examination of conscience, ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, Holy Spirit, show me where I've been wrong. Show me where I've failed. Ask the Holy Spirit to convict you. The Holy Spirit will never condemn you. If you're convicted of your sins, rejoice. That's a work of the Holy Spirit. If you feel condemned, reject that. Who does that come from? That comes from the enemy, the father of lies, the evil one. God will convict us of our sins, but God does that because he does not want to see us at the end, standing before the judgment and facing condemnation. So that is one of the things the Holy Spirit does for us, is convict us of our sins. And may we rejoice in that gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit who does so much for us. If you read scriptures, there are all those variety of gifts in the Spirit, and we don't all get the same gifts. Some have some gifts, some have other gifts. And there is the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, kindness. Let us be open to those gifts and those fruits of the Holy Spirit. And to God be the glory. God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
Pope of Rome, our most reverend Metropolitan William, our God of and good ship, the Venerable Presbyter, the Diaconate Christ, the Minor Orders, the Monastic Order, our civil authorities, all the armed forces, all the service of our country, the noble, ever memorable <coughs> founders and benefactors of this holy church. May the Lord God remember in his kingdom all you Christians of the true faith, always, now, and ever, and forever. Amen. Amen.
<laughs> remember me, my brothers and children. May the Lord God remember you, peace to you, and pray for me, my children. May the Holy Spirit come upon you in the power of the Most High. May the Spirit Himself come celebrate with us all the days of our life. May the Lord God remember you, peace to you, and pray for me, my brothers and For the precious gifts placed before us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord God Almighty, you will not wholly receive the sacrifice of praise from those who call upon you with their whole heart. Accept also the prayer of the sinners. <clears throat> Bring us to your holy altar. Enable us to offer you gifts and spiritual sacrifices for our sins and for the people's failings. Make us worthy to find favor in your sight, that our sacrifice may be pleasing to you, that the good spirit of your grace may rest on us, and on these gifts here present, and on all your people. Grant this the mercies of the only begotten Son, with whom we are blessed, together with our holy, good life and spirit, now and ever, and forever. Amen. Peace be to all. And to your Profess the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, one in essence and undivided. The doors, the doors in wisdom, let us be attentive. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. Until you brought us to heaven, 
and gave us your kingdom to come. For all this we thank you in your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. For all that we know and do not know, for the manifest and hidden manifest bestowed on us, we also thank you for this liturgy which are pleased to accept from our hands. Even though there stand before you thousands of angels, tens of thousands of angels, cherubim and seraphim, and six wings, and many eyes swung up on their wings, singing, shouting, crying aloud, and saying, The triumphal hymn. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, and heaven are filled with your glory.
that for those who partake of them, he may bring about a spirit of vigilance, the remission of sins, the communion of the Holy Spirit, the fullness of the heavenly kingdom, confidence in you, not judgment or condemnation. Moreover, we offer you this spiritual sacrifice for those who departed in the faith, the forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and for every just spirit brought to perfection in faith, especially the most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious lady, the Theotokos, the ever virgin Give us our trespasses as we 
forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever.
suffered in resurrection, you feel to ascend into heaven, which you have lowered, when you descended to become flesh from the virgin for our sakes, you establish your promise on earth by sending down and comforting the Spirit upon us, your apostles, as you have established in all holy unity in them, and those who through them have faith in your steadfast presence and sustain the church, Christ's merciful gifts and manifold blessing gifts. Do not take away these gifts from us as our sins deserve, but put to death all carnal desires in us that would hinder the coming of the Spirit. Drive out from us any thought, word, or deed that would grieve Him, and any hindering evil passion that would make our souls dark with the loss of His life. Make us pure vessels of His glory, that we be like the upper room in Zion, full of His brightness. Show us to be thrones of a spiritual fire, like the apostles who received her fruits, that by His support we may be led into the Holy Land of immortality and blessed promise. The whole world then is full of joy in you and condemning glorifies you for your most glorious together with your Holy Father and your co-eternal and all holy good and life and spirit now and ever and forever. Amen. Blessed be thy name. always, now, and ever, and forever. Amen. Before we uh, do the, we have the, the kneeling prayers. Uh, so turn to be honest with kneeling this whole time until now. Uh, but uh, there's a paper, kind of goldish paper. You know, um, before you leave, uh, it's on the table over there. Okay, oh. it says, "Oh, Heavenly King, prayer." Mm -hmm. uh, so this coming week, Pentecost, we Pentecost week. On the Monday, mm -hmm. Tuesday, okay. It's an octave. And the next week's ends <coughs> the octave with the All Saints. Mm -hmm. So next week we have a uh, commemoration of the saints and the relics, the relics of the saints next mm -hmm. week. But yes, yeah, so we'll have a number of relics here next week. Um, anyway, so um, yeah, so please take one of those uh, uh, before you leave and pray that every day. And there's an explanation of that prayer. Okay. Right now, um, after the closing blessing. Um, we have the kneeling prayers, they're kind of long, okay? So we all kneel, but um, we're not used to kneeling in the Western Eastern Church, but um, we'll be kneeling, just you kneel as much as you can. If you have to sit down, sit down, okay? Oh, thank so you. Uh, oh, sure. if you have to stand up, you have to stand up, okay? But otherwise, we'll uh, attempt kneeling at the end of prayer. Glory to Christ our God, our hope. Glory to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Now and ever and forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Give a blessing. May Christ our true God, who for our salvation sent down the all-holy Spirit from heaven in tongues of fire, upon his holy disciples and apostles. May he, the same Lord, have mercy on us and save us through the prayers of his most pure mother, the ever-virgin Theotokos, and of our holy father, John Christus, Archbishop of Constantinople, and through the prayers of our holy father among the saints, the of the great Archbishop of Caesarea, in Cappadocia, patron of this holy temple, and uh, through the prayers of all the saints, for Christ is good. And he loves mankind. Ah, 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 I don't exactly know why, but the tradition is the priest faces you while we're saying this prayer. So I guess because we're at one group of sinners <laughs> praying before the Lord. Okay. So. Lord, have mercy. O Lord, most pure, incomparable, without beginning, invisible, incomprehensible, unsearchable, unchangeable, unsurpassable, immeasurable, and forbearing, you alone have immortality. You live in unapproachable light. 
you made heaven and earth and the sea and all things created in them. You grant to all good requests, even before they ask. We pray to you and we beseech you to, O Master, who loves all mankind, the Father of our Lord, God and Savior, Jesus Christ. For our sake and for the sake of our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and Mary, the ever virgin and the most glorious God bearer. At first he taught us with words with which were then later confirmed through deeds when he endured the saving passion, giving us your humble, sinful, and unworthy servants the example of offering supplication to you with next bow and knees, bend, 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 bended knees for our sins and for the people's sakes, act done in ignorance. Hear us on whatever day we call upon you, for you alone are most merciful and the lover of mankind. However, especially hear us on this present day of Pentecost, on which, after our Lord Jesus Christ had ascended to heaven and was seated at your right hand, O God and Father, he sent down the Holy Spirit upon us, his holy disciples and apostles. The Holy Spirit came upon each of them, and filling all of them with this inexhaustible grace, they spoke in their grandeur in various tongues, and they prophesied. Now, therefore, hear us who are praying to you, and remember us, lowly and condemned as we are, to return our, our souls from the captivity of sin. For we have, your love, in your loving kindness, interceding for us, except us who fall down before you, calling out, We have sinned. To you we have committed from birth. Our, our, from my mother's womb, you are our God. But because we have spent our days in vain endeavors, we have been stripped of your help, having been deprived of very dis defiance. But trust in your generosities, recall, do not remember the sins of our youth and of our ignorance, and cleanse us of our secret sins, and do not reject us when we become elderly, with our strength weakened. Do not forsake us, and do not return to us to the earth before you have made us worthy to return to you, and until you have prepared us, making us acceptable to grace, appraise our iniquities by your generosity against the multitude of our transgressions, Place the abyss of your generosity, O oh Lord. Look down from the heights of your holiness upon your people, your present, who are waiting for abundant mercy from you. Visit us with your goodness. Deliver us and from this assault of the devil. Organize our love around your holy and sacred commandments. Assign to your people an angel, a faithful guardian. Gather all of us into your kingdom. Grant forgiveness to those who put their trust in you. Pardon them and us from sins, purify us by the op operation of your Holy Spirit, abolish the schemes of the enemy, clatter against us, encompass us with the holy angels, arm us with the armor of your righteousness, surround us with your truth, support us with your power, deliver us from every assault and from every trans treacherous plot laid by the adversaries, for it is you who show us mercy and save us, O Lord our God, and remember to you glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Again and again on bended knee, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O ever flowing, o ever -flowing and living and enlightening source of creative power, co-eternal with the Father, who most marvelously fulfilled the entire plan concerning our salvation. O Christ our God, who shattered the indissoluble bonds of death and the bolts of Hades, you trampled upon the multitude of the evil spirits, offering yourself for us as a blameless victim and giving your most pure body, untouched and unapproachable by any sin, as a sacrifice. And through this awesome and inscrutable sacred sacrifice, you have given us eternal life. By, for by descending into Hades and smashing the etern eternal gates and having shown the way to heaven to those who were sitting in darkness, you ensnared Satan, the prince of evil and the snake of the abyss with divinely wise enticements, and you bound him with the chains of gloom by your immeasurable power 
We have shackled him in Tartarus, the deepest infernal region of Hades, and through your might confined him to the unquenchable fire and the eternal darkness. Thus, O oh, greatly eminent wisdom of the Father, you have manifested yourself as the great helper of the mis misfortunate, and you enlighten those who are were sitting in darkness in the shadow of death. You, O oh Lord of everlasting glory and beloved Son of the Most High Father, O oh, everlasting light of the everlasting light, O oh, Son of Righteousness, hear us. <coughs> We're praying to you in great repose. Grant, grant repose to the souls of your servants, our ancestors, our brothers and sisters who have already departed this world. To all of our relatives, to all Orthodox <coughs> believers, for whom we now make a remembrance, for the authority of all things is with you, and in you, in your hand, you control all the ends of the earth. O Almighty Master, the God of our fathers, and the Lord of mercy, O Creator of the race of mortals and of the immortals, and of all human nature, O Creator of life and of its termination, of that life of, of being transferred into another world, you measure out the years for the living, and you appoint the time of death. You order present necessities and expediently secure those needed for the future. To those who have been wounded by the sting of death, you make them glad with the hope of resurrection. You indeed are the master of all, God of our, our Savior, the hope of all those at the ends of the earth and of those far away at sea. On this, the last and the great salvific day of the Feast of Holy Pentecost, you showed us the mystery of the Holy Trinity, consubstantial and co-eternal, without division or confusion. And you have also shown us the, the, the descent and the arrival of your holy and life-creating spirit being poured out in the form of fiery tongues on your holy apostles, appointing them to be the proclaimers of the good news of our faith and showing them to be confessors and preachers of the true divine teaching. Hear us, your humble servants, beseeching you, and grant repose to the souls of your servants who have already departed into a place of light, a place of refreshment and peace, and uh, from uh, which all illnesses, the sorrow and sighing have been taken away. Commit their souls to the place of the just and make them worthy to, of peace and of repose. For the dead cannot praise you, O Lord, nor do those in Hades venture to offer confession to you. But we, the living, bless you, and we pray and offer you supplications and sacrifices for their souls. Accept them, O Master, o, accept then, O Master, our entreaties and uh, supplications and grant and repose to all the fathers, mothers, children, brothers and sisters of each of us, to our relatives, to all the people in our country, and to all those who have already departed in the hope of resurrection and of eternal life. Inscribe their names in the book of life, committing their spirits to the bosom of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the land of the living, in the heavenly kingdom, in the paradise of delights, with your radiant angels, guide them all into your holy dwelling place. Together with them, also raise up our bodies on the day which you have appointed according to your holy and unfailing vows. Therefore, O Lord, there is no death, for your servants, when we depart from the body and return to you, our God, passing over from things which are most sorrowful unto things that are most wholesome and delightful, and into repose and joyfulness. If we have in the least, in, in the least way sinned against you, be merciful to us and also to them, because there is no one who is pure from stain before you even if his life be but for a single day. You alone, O Jesus Christ, our Lord, while on earth manifest yourself to be sinless, through you we all trust in obtaining mercy and the remission of sin. <coughs> for this reason, because you are a gracious and loving God, pardon, remit, and forgive both us and those of them for whom we have fallen into sin, both voluntary and uh, through human frailty, those committed willingly, or through ignorance, those that are evident and those that are unnoticed, those committed 
whether in deed or through thought or by word or whether in any of our conversations and emotions. For you are the strength and the repose of our souls and bodies. And we render glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and forever. Amen. festival anointing at this time, and uh, we have uh, refreshments in the hall. What's the blessing of the food now? Let us pray. Just pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, our true God, on this holy day of Pentecost, bless this with the food and the drink of your servants, for your holy now and ever and forever. Amen. 